This is, again, an honor to stand behind this pulpit today on such a special day. I don't take this invitation lightly. I thank your husband, our pastor, Pastor Dan. And as Pastor Becky said, Mother's Day is a complex day. Um, it's a hard day to get a sermon because we have a lot of people in the audience, men, women, boys, girls, but really the sermon is geared toward moms, and so that's a hard way to get a sermon. But it's a complex day, as Pastor Becky said, because we're celebrating our mothers and our spiritual moms and all those who have spoken to our lives. But it's also a day of grieving because we're remembering all the mothers and the children who are not at the table today. So that makes it um, difficult. But I believe that we can do our celebrating and our grieving together today because God is in it. Yes. Today we're going to take a look at the mother of all mothers, the motherhood of Mary, the mother of Jesus. We talk about her story every Christmas. We share the birth of Jesus um, to our children when they're very little, but there's so much more to her story than the immaculate birth of Jesus. She had a complex motherhood, and I believe that we can look at her story today and we can learn or understand from her example four principles for our own motherhood today. And would you please stand with me for the reading of the word? We're going to be looking at Luke 1, 30, chapter 1, verse 30 through 38, and John 19. I'm going to go ahead and read the word for the sake of time, but when there's a bolded scripture, just like Pastor Dan does, see I learned from my pastor, then you raise your voice and you read that out loud with me. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you, have for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. They're not bolded, so I'll just like put emphasis on those. <laughs> he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Today I've titled the message, The Complexity of Motherhood. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would be with me today as I deliver not my word, but I deliver your word, that I would not be seen, but you would be seen, you would be heard, your message would be triumphant here today for these mothers. I thank you, God, for the reading of the word. Amen. You may be seated. I mean, talk about the complexity of motherhood when we're looking at this story. I mean, first of all, just think about it. This teenage girl is right in this room and an angel appears. And this angel begins to talk to her. I mean, that's not an everyday occurrence. But then she's a, she's a young teenage girl. She's not married. She has a fiancé, but she's not married. And he said, you're going to be a mom. 
Ooh. And then he says, I'm going to work in you, move in you, and you're going to have not just a son, but the son of God. Wow, this is a lot. She said, I, how can this be? I've never been with a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, and this is going to happen just as I said that it would. Well, if this was all true, and if what she was saying, that the angel was saying to Mary was going to happen, then she was going to be risking a lot. She was risking being a teenage mom and possibly having her family all of her friends and her fiancé all ostracize her, which would leave her as a single mother with no support, no financial support, no support uh, like surrounding her at all. But it also meant the possibility of her being stoned to death because of her perceived infidelity. She was about to carry the Son of God this was a lot, and this was complex. But I believe that we can learn a story. We can learn principles here. And the first one is inspire greatness. He will be great. In verse 32, the angel of the Lord began uh, planting some seed in Mary's heart in whom her son would become. He will be great. He will be called the son of the highest. He will rule and reign over the house of Jacob. And throughout the story of Mary's life, we find her instilling greatness into her son, imparting faith into him and speaking life and nurturing his godly character and his attributes. And without saying it, it may be obvious that as mothers, we are called to do the same for our children, to inspire greatness into them and to speak words of life into them and to nurture their faith and their possibilities. Uh, when our son, our middle son, was about three years old, he's standing here so handsome today, um, he was, I was just struggling with him you know, nurturing him and mothering him as a young mom. And uh, we were at church one Sunday, and he was in his class, and I was in service. And at the end of service, I came up to the altar, and it was steps much like this. And I remember just laying out across the steps, and I was just crying out to God, Oh, God, help me with this child of mine. <laughs> My friends probably thought I was really being blessed, but I was like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to mother him or how to nurture him. I was tired and I was overwhelmed in my parenting. But I will never forget what the Holy Spirit spoke into my heart. And he said, I am your father and you are my child and you're just like him. He said, you're just like him toward me. <laughs> you throw fits and you don't always obey. But I know you and I see you and I love you. Now do the same for your son. I knew that the Lord was telling me that I needed to see that my son was a child of God and the personality that was in my son was put there by God and that my responsibility was to nurture that, to instill greatness in him. And did you know what I think is really wonderful? And I was crying before I even came into the church today because I was already knowing that I was going to tell this story about speaking greatness unto him. But he texted me the mor this morning and he said, Mom, you're going to do great. And I thought, he's been raised. He's a godly man, a godly husband, a godly father, and now he's speaking greatness into me. <sighs> it's what we're called to do, to speak greatness into our children. Did you know 
that we are instilling into our children who they will become without always even thinking of the consequences, whether that be good or be bad. So we better be speaking life, instilling greatness, instilling, God, instilling godly potential into their character and godly faith. In 2 Timothy, we hear Paul talking uh, to Timothy, his spiritual son, and he's saying, this faith that is in you that was handed down to you or instilled in you was handed down to you from your mother or your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. From who? His grandmother and his mother. His grandmother and his mother had instilled into his godly character, had instilled into his personality the faith of God. Now here he is, and Paul is talking to him, and he's saying, there's a complex time. We're living in a complex world. Now is the time. These things that have been instilled in you by your grandmother and your mother, they need to be stirred up. When you look at the Greek, the words stir up there are likened to the stirring up of the embers of a fire. Have you ever sit around a campfire? I just love having a campfire with my family. But sitting around the fire and the fire, all the flames start going down. The heat is diminished, right? But there's just this like low-lying redness at the bottom. Um, and then you can take a poker and you start poking at it, and all of a sudden, flames begin to build back up. And that's what Paul is saying. Stir up the flame of faith that is in you. I know that motherhood is complex. And sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we get overwhelmed. And we know that we're supposed to be inspiring and instilling and nurturing into our children. But we need something from God and God is saying it's in you let's stir it up let's stir it up he loves you so much and you know what he says he said sometimes we just need to find ourselves across an altar like this sometimes we just need to lay across some steps again sometimes we just need to hear the Holy Spirit speak to us and say you are a child of God you are a child of the living God, and you are great. You are loved. I see you. I know you. I created you, and I've called you, and you're cherished, and you're, you're treasured. And I'm calling you today, my beloved. So we just pull into the arms of God today and let him rekindle, renew, <laughs> set our heart ablaze for the spirit of God and the passion of God that is within us that we may instill, renew, <laughs> inspire a passion in our children and nurture the faith of God in them, the character of God in them, the greatness of God in them. The, we can look at those who are sitting next to us at our right and our left and say, there's a greatness in you, but point them ultimately to the greatness of God. Second, in verse 35, the angel of the Lord said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And of course, we know that the angel was speaking about Mary conceiving physically um, the Son of God and that she would carry him in her womb. But that statement is so powerful for us today as moms because we need, ladies, the Holy Spirit to come upon us. We need to carry his presence. You know, as you may remember, in the Old Testament, when the presence of God came, it would come in tents and then in temples. And only once a year could the high priest 
go in to the presence of God. And that was only after they had done all the cleansing and all the rituals and all the sacrifices. And I mean, they had to have it all together. And then they would go in once a year. But when the angel spoke to Mary and said that you will be with child, there was a shift happening in the atmosphere that God would no longer only dwell in houses, in temples, in tents, but he was saying, I am coming not to live in a place, but I am coming to dwell in a people. In you and in I, we are carriers of the presence of God. And as the sons and the daughters of God, at that moment, we were receiving an endowment of power from on high. As my husband often quotes, and he actually preached it when he preached here last a few months ago, he quotes the Apostle Paul when he declares, Do you not know? Do you not understand that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? You are a temple. As believers, we are temples of God, and we are carriers of his presence. And there is no greater gift that we can give to our children than to be mamas, to be spiritual mothers who carry the presence of God. You know, as mothers, what's the old saying say? That um, if mama's not happy, ain't. <laughs> And if mama's stressed out, I mean, everybody's feeling it. Is that true? Yeah. And um, so we create the atmosphere of God in our homes. And if we've been in the presence of God, then we create an atmosphere of the presence of God in our homes. A mama whose faith is real and not just for Sunday show, but we live our faith and the presence of God that dwells in us also on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday. We live it wherever we go, whatever we say, that our children are seeing us hungering for more of the presence of God, hungering after the Holy Spirit in our lives, thirsting after the living water and the word of God. We want to live in the presence of God, not only in the good times, but also in the hard times, that our children see us walking and living the presence of God in the light, but also, as the song said, in the night. When we're celebrating in the day, and we're grieving, and there's pain, and there's heartache in the night, but the presence of God and his faithfulness is still in us and dwells in us, that they're seeing that, they know that, that the presence of God is just not part of our lives or a fraction of our lives, but it's uh, we're living it for our children as a reflection of our normal, everyday life. Let me say that again. Let his presence not be a fraction of your life, but a reflection of your life. Do I hear an amen? Do you know, the more that we treasure the presence of God, the more that we look like him. And uh, I don't know about you, but I have boxes and boxes and albums and albums of pictures. And on my phone, I embarrassingly, embarrassingly have something like 30,000 462 pictures. I just look on my phone. I mean, it's like it hasn't backed up for a long time because I don't have enough whatever you need to do to back it up. So I need to take care of that. But I can't stand to delete or throw away any of those things because I cherish looking at my children and my grandchildren and their sweet reflection. I think I have a picture of them. We saw them this morning, but Ah, aren't they so cute? I mean, that might not even be the best picture ever, but to me it is because they're my babies. 
And I love that reflection, and I don't want to miss what that reflection looks like when they are older. But you know, more than anything, I want to be a reflection of God to them. I want those babies to know that this grandma loves God, and the presence of God lives in me, dwells in me, has his being in me, that I hunger after the presence of God and the Holy Spirit, and I want to walk in that, and I want them to see that in me, know that in me. We don't know if Jesus looked like Mary, and it doesn't matter if he did or didn't, because children don't have to look like you to be family. But we know that Jesus looked like his father. He was a reflection of his father. He said, if you've seen me, you have seen the father. And Mary was also a reflection of the father because she was an image bearer of God. And it says that an image bearer is, by definition, a carrier of his presence. So here's the good news for us, O oh daughter. You are made in his image. And when he lives in you, then you reflect his image and you carry his presence everywhere that you go. I'm talking about the complexity of motherhood here. Moms place a value on inspiring greatness in their children, in carrying his presence. And now in the final phrase of the scripture that we read, Mary's encounter with the angel, she said, let it be to me according to your word. In other words, she said, I say yes to the will of God. So our third thought is just say yes. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary was not highly equipped. She was not highly educated. She was not highly connected. She was just highly favored by God. I believe she was highly favored by God because God knew that she would simply say yes. He knew that her motherhood would absolutely be connect, uh, complicated. It would be complex. It would involve a lot of things that seemed seemingly impossible, but yet she would say yes. He knew that about her, and he knows that about us. I love it because he doesn't call us as the most educated, the most equipped, the first in line. He just wants us to say yes. And he doesn't say, I need you to have all your stuff together and all your ducks in a row before you say yes to follow me. He just simply says, say yes and follow me. His will is not always easy and his way is not always the most simple way. Sometimes it will be complicated and complex. Sometimes it will seem impossible but every day every morning on those days that even are difficult days we can rest assured that we can just say let it be according to your word i said yes to the lord as a child but when i was in my late teens and early 20s i was saying yes to the things that were not in the will of God more than I was to the things that were in the will of God. And do you not know that any yes to anything outside of the will of God is going to lead you further and further away from God? But I thank God for a praying mother, for a praying father, a mother who believed in me, who unconditionally loved me. And I thank you for a God who brought forgiveness and redemption and put me on the right path. And my yes to him was the best yes I've ever said. I read this fun definition of a mother. A mother, mothers are like superwomen. They are 
are beautiful. They are strong. We have a lot of beautiful and strong women in this house today. They are courageous and they fight to make a difference in the world, to make it a better place. And they say yes to missions that may seem impossible. And they multitask until it is accomplished. Yes? <laughs> I remember a time, again, also when our kids were little, and my husband was doing a lot of traveling and a lot of ministry, and he was actually on a trip to Africa. And I knew in my heart that he was making a worldwide difference. He was really doing something. But I was home having a pity party. Here I am, okay, now you can see where the Lord said you're just like him. Okay, so I was home having this little pity party, and um, I was thinking, you know, I, I could never make a worldwide difference. I mean, what kind of difference could I ever make? I'm no superwoman, and all I am doing is I'm just a mom. And I'm just here in my little house with my little children who are hanging all over me. And I'm just doing anything I can just to keep my house in order and my children alive. And God said in my spirit, I felt him say to me that I was called to make a difference. And that difference would be my yes to him and investment into my children. That starts at home. My yes every single morning to God made a difference as a mom in what I had to speak into the lives of my children. Every day that we say yes to God, it impacts our marriage. It impacts our children. It impacts our family. It impacts the people that we see every day in the ministry, in our workplace, in the marketplace, wherever the Lord leads my feet to go and my voice to speak and my hands to touch, we are making a difference when we say yes to God. And that starts in our home. Mm -hmm. Listen, every day we say yes to God, it strengthens our trust in him. Because it's not about me. It's not about what I can or can't do or what I'm equipped to do or not to do. It is about God. And it activates the will of God, the purposes of God, the ways of God in our lives and in our family. We may not always completely understand what God is asking of us or how it would be accomplished. And I know this by experience, that it may seem impossible. It may seem overwhelming. It may seem out of our control. But when we put our trust and faith in a yes to God, then he has the best plan, and he will make it happen. And finally, we end up at the cross of Christ. Let's look at this last scripture. John 19, 25, and 27. But standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother. Who? His mother, his mama. Standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold, your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. So we, here we see Jesus has been beaten almost to the point that he is un recognizable. He is suspended with his arms stretched out, hanging between heaven and earth on a cross. I mean, the beauty of the Advent Christmas story is long gone, and it's been replaced by the grotesque nature
picture of the most cruel of deaths, Jesus hanging on a cross. I mean, what a contrast from the heavenly host singing, glory to God in the highest, to now Jesus hanging on a cross, saying, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And here is Mary, the mother of Jesus, standing by the cross, watching her son die this grotesque death. Moms, sometimes we don't know what to do. We don't know what to say or how to say it. But what we can do is show up. That's the last thought that I want to leave with you today, that sometimes during the complexity of our motherhood, we just need to show up. Can you imagine the mother of Jesus? She was the mother of the Son of God. <laughs> she was his mother, but he was her Savior. That wouldn't always be, you know, be easy. You wouldn't always know how to raise this child. <laughs> but she did always show up. I mean, she showed up when there was no room in the end, and she had to deliver this baby out in the stables with the animals. She showed up when the angels were singing, and the shepherds came, and the wise men came. But she also showed up when Herod wanted to kill her baby. They had to escape and go to another country for his safety. She showed up when he went missing at 12 years old. And then she found him in the temple asking questions. She showed up when he needed to perform his first miracle of turning the water into wine at a wedding in Cana. She showed up when he was preaching and teaching and healing the sick, and she showed up when he was hanging on a cross. As mothers, we just show up. I see this in my own daughter-in-laws. They show up when they're absolutely exhausted, but the kids are crying through the night, so they get up and go to their rooms. They show up when their toddlers are small and they fall down and get their knees skinned up. They show up for those first days of school and parent-teacher conferences. We show up when our kids have those last-minute presentations to give at school. And why do they wait till the last minute? How many of you have had a child who says, oh, by the way, I have a presentation to give tomorrow and I have to build like this whole big thing? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but we show up, we show up to take him to baseball practices and dance recitals and concerts. We show up for graduations, which there were several of them yesterday, and for those special moments in their lives. And we show up for God moments when our kids are saved when they're dedicated to the Lord like today and when they're baptized in water and when the Holy Spirit comes upon them and they're called to do something of spiritual significance, we show up. But when daily situations and circumstances get hard, relationships get tense, our children are doing more running from God than they are running to God. We show up. But now we show up on our knees. Pastor Brent, we show up for the fight. Some of the best battles that we can fight are not when we get in front of our kids and point our fingers in their faces, it's when we're down on our knees, crying out before the Lord and laying our children 
and our heartache and our pain and our misunderstandings and our relationships and our fears all at the foot of the cross. We sang about it today. It's the best battle that we can fight. When the crowds who sang Hosanna to God in the highest just a few days earlier were now gone, and everyone had it abandoned, Jesus, his mother, showed up. But I love this about Jesus. I love this about our Savior. He showed up for his mother. He said, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. So even in this most excruciating pain that Jesus was in, he made sure to take care of his mama. Don't you love that? He made sure to take care of her. In the complexity of motherhood, moms, Jesus has shown up for you. He shows up for all of us. His love for all of us was so great and so extravagant and so unconditional that he laid down his life upon a cross that we might be saved. He bore all of our sin, all of our shame, and became the perfect sacrificial lamb, making a way for each of us. And as a mother, I have experienced some pain. I have experienced some heartaches, and I know most all of you have experienced pain and heartaches, but there are some of you in this house today that have experienced some things like Mary. Maybe you have experienced the death of a child. I can't even imagine that kind of pain. Some of you have experienced the death of a mother. I know that is so very painful, especially on a day like today. Some of you, motherhood did not turn out the way that you thought that it would, that you hoped that it would, that you aspired that it might. And I can say that for moms looking at children, or maybe even children looking at their moms. And that makes it hard. Some of you I know have wanted to become a mama for a long time. And that heartache is so hard. I remember wanting a child for a very long time. difficult. And I know that today there may be somebody here who gave up on a pregnancy. And you've carried that burden with you for a very long time. And Mother's Day every year is excruciatingly hard for you. In preparation for this message and putting it together, I prayed for you. I found myself one day in my office at home, just laid out prostrate across the floor, just my face in the floor, just crying out for you. And the presence of God filled the room. I felt the pain. I felt the hurt. I felt the sorrow. <laughs> but I felt the presence of God say, and I declare to you today that your day of dancing will come, and your promises from God will not go unfulfilled. Mary watched her son as he died on a cross. 
She watched him as they put his beaten, buffeted body into a tomb. But her day of resurrection came. Those things that were dead in her came alive again. Mary was not, did not just show up for her son's death, but she showed up for his resurrection. <laughs> She showed up at his ascension. She showed up when the Holy Spirit came in the upper room. And she showed up to see the growth of the church and the presence of God fill the earth. <laughs> today, mamas, today, women of God, those dead places that are inside of you can come alive again. Those dead dreams, those broken promises can come alive again in you. The faith that has just been diminished and it's a low-lying ember can be stirred up in you again today. Those things that need to be healed can be whole and relationships can be mended in Jesus' name because he showed up for you. Hmm. Those things that seem impossible can be made possible again because, yes, motherhood is complex, but our God is ready to show up. Amen. I believe that there are some moms and some dads in this room today that just need to say yes to God. Maybe you've been holding back, <laughs> but God says, I've got something for you. In closing, I've gone over, and it's a good day. I want all the moms to stand because I just want to pray over you today. God is good, and he is faithful, and he loves you so very much. And you know what? He sees you. And he says, you are great. You are cherished. You are my beloved daughter. I love you. I'm here for you. And he knows at whatever stage you may be in, you may be a young teenage girl, or you may be a great grandma. God knows you. And he knows what you have need of today. We can celebrate today and we can grieve today. Whatever emotions that we're going through, God is with you. I would just ask that those that are around these moms, that you would just gently lay your hands on their shoulders. And we want to pray for you, moms. Lord Jesus, you see every one of your daughters today. You see right where they are. You see the stage of life that they're in and whatever they're going through. And I believe that you have purposed in them today exactly, exactly what they need before you. I know that you will stir up in them what they need, that you will stir up the faith, that you're with them in their celebrating and you're with them in their grieving lord i thank you jesus that as these moms leave today and their burden maybe by children who have gone astray that are not walking after god that you would be with them those mamas who were tired and overwhelmed and their littles or just a lot that you would be with them Lord, that you would be with our grandmas, that you would be with each woman. I thank you today. I want every woman in this house to stand right now. If you are a teenage girl, whether you have a mom or, I mean, whether you are a mom or not a mom, every woman from teenage all the way up. Listen, we need you, ladies. This house needs you. Your families need you because we need moms. We need grandmas. We need spiritual.
spiritual mothers. We need aunties. We need adoptive mothers and foster mothers. We need women of God. We need teenage girls who will inspire greatness in those who are around you. Will carry the presence of God everywhere you go. Who will say yes to the will and the ways of God. And will just show up. Jesus just needs a yes today. Can you raise your hand and just say yes? Yes. You are beautiful, and I wish you a very, very happy Mother's Day. And I just want to say in closing that one of my responsibilities as a women's ministry director for the Pentecostal Church of God is creating Bible-based devotionals for women. And I have some of them out here at a table. You may want to pick some up. Um, I have two right here. My daughter's going to just lift them up. Just lift them up. Grace. Woo. One's called um, Her Story Chosen, one's called Her Story Redeemed, and they're the study of 24 women of the Bible. Again, I love you, and happy Mother's Day.